team of Tapple Doodles. It's Harmon Town is now in session. Let's welcome out our game master, Spencer Crittenden, everybody, please. What you got in that bag? Oh, school supplies and pencil shaving. Let's bring out a mayor, shall we? His name is Dan Harmon. Yay! Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, keep the beat going. Keep the beat going. I I'm just doing this. I really miss doing this as much as your mama's now face. Cut, now cut the beat off. Cut the beat off. Okay. Wait. Bring the beat. Bring the beat back. Bring the beat. Back. Ah, fuck, pussy! Yeah, do it more like an Iron Maiden, like more like rock and roll. Ah, fuck, pussy! That is located. Uh, Get out of here, egghead! I'm sorry. Ah, pussy! You invited me to the recording. Get out of here! I wanna eat pussy! Now, now do the iced tea like a uh, filling like me. Hey, it's not business. It's personal when I eat your pussy business. Uh, come on, knock it off. What does yeah. MC Gun Control think about eating pussy? Yo, uh, Gun Control. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> God damn it. Like, you know, all the fantasies you have in your head of, like, let's start doing the podcast again, that just all goes to shit. <laughs> in the first five seconds. Do this, do that. Well, now we did it. Now it's all... I'm back to being jaded again. Oh, no. Yeah, well, thank you. I got engaged. Yeah! It's so cool. I had always said, you know, obviously, as a divorcee, like, a lot of you kids can't uh, relate to this. Like, like uh, uh, there, there, I'm sure there are a ton of people in the theater that are on their third marriage, but uh, it's, 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 it's L.A. after all. And, and, and I, I endorse you. Like, I think, like, use marriage as an expression. Uh, like, 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 express yourself. Like, 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 let me see what you do in your eighth marriage. Um, but I think the typical person is like, no, marriage is for keeps, and that's why I hate it or I love it or whatever. I, I never saw myself as a divorcee. I loved my wife. Like, I proposed to my lovely, lovely wife, my partner, my best friend. Uh, we were together for a probably record minimum amount of time <laughs> before we were like, whoa, mistake. And, but I always, I was like, I, I would say to Cody, like, look, you want to put a ring on this finger, like, do it. But the one thing I can't do is be like, will you also marry me? <laughs> That seems problematic, because it's like the proposal is coming from the one guy that's like, look, you're already established that your opinion of who should be married is flawed. <laughs> is this logic not tracking? Like, 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 don't get married and then get divorced. My therapist said the same thing, which is not really. Uh, because it's disrespecting your... But I'm, I'm like, well, no, fucking you got to do it this time. But, but uh, Cody proposed to you on this one, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that I'm like, yeah, I'll hold out for that. Did she, uh, did she like, get down on the knee into the whole thing? Yeah, or? she did. She almost drowned. It was, it was, because <laughs> it was in Tahiti, and she was, she picked her spot, and she did the thing, and she had rehearsed it, and she was up to her neck in water, and she proposed to me. I knew it was coming eventually, but I didn't know it was coming there. Are, are you going to take the name Heller, or are you going to keep Harmon? I think I would, I, I, selfishly, I would like to take the name Heller because I would like to die. 
I've been through this whole thing. Like I like the like I, I, I consider this very therapeutic. Like a woman got down on her knee and said blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Would you marry me? And I, I, I was like, holy fuck, I knew this was happening. I knew this was happening. And then I'm like, holy shit, it's happening now. And then I'm like, honestly, to be honest and share with you. This is not a binary decision you make. However, it gets reduced if somebody says to you at the halftime show of a thing, you're like, you're like, the alternative is no, I won't marry you. There's a there's a little bit of a push there where you're like, yeah, of course, first and foremost, yes and, but there's a processor in the back of your head where you're like, what's happening? How is this gonna work? So, so you, your, your UCB training kicked in at this point? Of course. I think everyone's UCB training kicks in. Every, everyone doesn't need UCB training. I, that was the start of a thing in my Tahitian vacation where I was like in the background, I didn't share this with Cody at all. I shared it with my therapist, but I was like, every day since I said yes to this proposal, I had been confronting this anxiety. Or I was like, a woman just proposed to you and you said yes. And what have you given up? What are you doing? What's going on? And, and it, it, it made me kind of like go through these thoughts in my head where I was like, well, first of all, now I can get as fat as I want. <laughs> but then counter that, I was like, no, you now have to get thinner than you've ever been. <laughs> what's, what's that? There's a voice from down here somewhere where like, he's, he's not saying anything that I disagree with, but your, your, your license to speak is too liberal. <laughs> Uh, I, I curtail it. Uh, I, I, it's distracting me. But, but even though you're saying exactly everything I'm thinking, I, 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 fuck you. Silence. <laughs> Free speech zone is in my butt. The the <laughs> go get up my butt, sir. I, I I started thinking in my head. It was like an emotional thing where I was like, oh shit. Like when a guy proposes to a woman. The guy, it doesn't matter, like, remove all of your politics about who pays for what and all this stuff. Like, the bottom line is that a guy is, like, thinking about it and then buying a ring, and, which is what Cody had to do. And, like, it's just that power of, like, when you hit the buzzer. I knew Cody was going to propose to me. I was in love with her. I wanted her to propose to me. I didn't know it was going to happen then. But that makes it no, like, like it was like, sh like, she gets she gets to hit the buzzer in the game show of like we're married. Now. She she told me she's like Sh should I? <laughs> she told me I don't want to hear that you got to weigh in. That's awful. <laughs> I told her don't do it. <laughs> okay, all right, there we go. But but like it was like and, and I was like there was this we, there was this thing of anxiety hanging over me. I don't know how much would, of it had to do would, with the would, fact would, that would like look have, I've been married and I fucked it up. Like would, I don't know you, how to do would this. Would you have proposed to her if she hadn't done it? No, it well, it, I don't know if I would have. I told her. I told everybody within shouting range. I was like, look, <laughs> I love marriage, so I proposed to my ex-wife. It didn't work out so good. Therefore, what right do I have? to, mm -hmm. it felt like, it's like, what does it mean for me to get on one knee and say, hey, you know what? <laughs> uh, I got a feeling this one's real. I, I got a, it's sort of like, to me, there's an elephant in that room where it's like, yeah, but what do you know? <laughs> you're divorced. Like, 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 you're the one guy in this exchange that doesn't know whether or not you should be proposing to someone. You already did it. And it was always an open joke between me and Cody, because she's, and she's like, what if I ever proposed to you? I'm like, the day you proposed to me, you get fucking automatic, yes, I love you. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. But that, and that, that's sort of what, what all couples are, in, 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 a, in a sense. Like, it's not like, hopefully, there's not a lot of couples where someone's like, by the way, uh, shit or get off the pot, and it's like, oh, fuck, oh, God. Like, we perceive it that way, but the truth is that you're like, you know, it's more of a continuum. And, and so that's why I was like, 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 I said, of course I said yes, because of course the answer is yes. And then for the next two days, unbeknownst to Cody, I was sort of like, in my head, it was like, why do I feel uneasy? And the answer is, because this wasn't, I didn't, I, I'm missing, like, the way you miss your wallet or your keys, I'm missing my agency. I, I, it's not like this isn't what I wanted. 
It's just that I didn't. <laughs> I'm like, I've been shocked like corn I, uh, of like something that doesn't protect me anyway. It doesn't matter. I didn't want it, but I was like, it's gone. I didn't, it was, I didn't even know I wanted it. And then I started to think in my head, I was like, why don't you run through some exercises? Like, like what's your worst nightmare? It was like, okay, well, I'm been, I've been taken. Uh, so it's my job to serve this woman for the rest of my life. And that actually kind of made me start, like, I was sort of like, like, I was thinking in my head, it was like, what if you were, like, property? What if you had been taken? What if you had no agency? What if somebody had looked at you and said, I want that? And you were like, okay, I'll, okay, I'll let you take that. And, like, I don't want you to leave me, so... I guess I'd better be on my toes from now on, as opposed to this other... I, 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 I wonder if any woman here could relate to that feeling. <laughs> That's my point, is I was sort of like in doses, I was sort of like subjecting myself, and the, and, the, and the more I pushed the weird dystopian narrative, where it was like, what if you actually were just a slave? What if you were a servant? What, what is your nightmare? What is the worst thing? What do we fear about... Uh, what, do, what do these symbols represent? Ring on your finger, like ring on my finger. I'm doing this. I take that. My father pays for this. You, the, I, you, he gives you away. What, what all this transactional stuff? And then, and then like, like, like thinking about like my part of it and going like, what if I was like a damsel? What if I, yeah, I, I, I it, it came out. I, I, I liked it. I, I was like, oh, like. Like yeah, get get like this is the good side of the equality thing. Like, like yeah, fucking I don't want I don't want to deal with this shit. Like doesn't every guy want? Like aren't incels like aren't incels complaining about like don't the, like like they they they, they uh, like how come women aren't just giving me sex? Like what, do you think they'd be happy if like we lived in a world where women could like walk up to them and go like you incel? <laughs> I choose you. I like your cheekbones. Can you make breakfast? Yes. Would they be willing to like to like like meet them halfway a little bit? Because like, uh, according to their website, no, they 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 don't. They want a world where like women are like like you can get them in the mail and stuff. But somewhere in the middle, there is like partnership where it's like, who me? <laughs> like, like like which I really I really like that feeling. All right, let's move on to something else. Thank you for congratulating me on my engagement. Uh, happy yeah. 2019. Uh, yes, I will. I will. Have you, uh, I, I do. I will take her. I will take her name because I kind of don't like Dan Harmon anymore. Yeah, but it won't. It won't be, be because be, I'm like a feminist. It'll be because I don't like myself. I. I. I it'll. It'll be me conveniently going like, oh, that guy that sexually harassed that lady and apologized for it on NPR. He's dead. I, I'll, I'll just be like, eh, Dan Heller's in the house. I, like, I. I kind of like that idea. Of being like, let's call it Hellertown and let's. Also, uh, yeah. It, you won't have to uh, have to change your monogram on your towels. It's the same. Still D H. Still D H. The people that really respect me have only ever called me D H. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's the bottom line. Like yeah. when you see Jed Apatow <laughs> walking down the road, you go, "Hey, D H." Yeah. It, uh, he gets it. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Wait. Uh, uh, so, do you guys think you're gonna get married? Soon no. It'll or? be. Uh, she's so lazy. It'll be. <laughs> it'll be a million years. She was so excited about proposing to a guy and making him like yeah. she'll be. It'll it, be a, I I bet yeah. I was I was I'll be honest I was stunned by the feminist triumph. Yeah. I was really oh. taken aback. That's all she wanted. She's done. It, that's the thing. It really. I was like, don't I don't even know how to feel about this. Yeah. Now, if we get married, do you want to? Yeah, it'll be five it years was from awesome. now. Rob Schraub will be officiating. We'll be in Death Valley between two rocks. Like it'll, it'll be there'll be eight people there. What if you guys uh, love each other so much that you just name each other Schraub? <laughs> uh, you become Dan and Cody Schraub. <sighs> that could be good. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I am. Prove uh, your love. Prove your love. I would love to prove my love. Okay, let's talk about some stuff. I, uh, Happy New Year. It's been such a long time. Uh, okay. Uh, I, 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 uh, uh, loud sneezing family on boat. Um, uh, Wait, that no. sounds yeah. like a hot one. Let, let's, let's start with that one. Let's I, go I, I want to hear about that. Okay, there was a fucking insanely loud sneezing family on... <laughs> as we came back from Tahiti, like, we went to this island... 
it, 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 like we got on the return boat. Like you got to go back to the. It's time. Your dream is over. It's time to stop. You got to go back home now. And so you're getting back on the boat, and it's just like, and you're back on the boat with whoever's, whoever else's dream is expired. And there was this family, and they're just like, they're they were from Dallas. I gleaned that, but it's like Cody was like, what? How? How? Like, what is the point of a sneeze if you haven't sneezed it yet? Because there was this like this person back there. We didn't, and they were they're just like, Hadja! 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 They were just sneezing so much. And the only funny part of the story is that we went through what we perceived as this whole like journey where we're like, we're trying to get back home, and, and uh, uh, Americans are. I, I, you know, I, I experienced just a small taste of like, I think we're a little privileged it, because we were in the middle of like a part of the navel of the world where like the English is not exactly like the, it's not like everyone's panicking if they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, like I'm real. I, I don't think I've ever traveled outside of the American hegemony. And I going to Tahiti, you kind of enter a French hegemony where, like, it's like, look, everyone speaks English, we get it, but, nah. <laughs> and the truth is, like, I am a property of French hegemony, so I have a French accent, and I will speak to you in French if because you're, like, this first world person, and it's, if you if you're like, I don't know French, you're like can I play Minecraft in my room? And they're like, who the fuck are you? You're a monster. It, it, like, the, the airports are like speaking French over speakers. Imagine that nightmare. Yeah. And you're like... Imagine an airport that didn't speak English. Over there. I, 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 I'm like, 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 I was like, holy shit. No wonder everyone just crowds the gate uh, instead of letting me take my first class seat. The, 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 the reason I bring it up is because there was this family that like for the boat, they're just like, hachu, hatch, hachu. This guy was like kept sneezing. And 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 Cody and I are like going through all this shit. And we're like, I can't, I don't know, like, whatever. It's it's all good. Like, I don't know what's happening. They called my name. Did you ever get your name called at an airport? Terrifying. What do you I'm sorry, you're very excited. You you you're like, you're yelling. No. Nobody's name is all right. <sighs> Happened to me once. Did you Scary. ever? Like, did they ever when I was traveling with you guys, Spencer Crittenden, will you come up? And, Mr. Crittenden, report to the thing for and, whatever. And you're like, aren't you thinking like, I gotta run. Oh my god. I gotta get out of oh here. Oh my god. Let me. Oh my god. Like I'm interfering with the operation Push over of a people. fucking thing. So like and now, now imagine like a uh, like an uh, a, 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 like a French airport. Right. Oh no. In the. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know where the, the the parody begins and the satire ends. I, I just just keep just button it up. I, I it's you're like a ventriloquist dummy in a Twilight Zone movie. I, I like I don't know. Am I supposed to throw you across the room? I, I, is it going to turn out that I was you the whole time? I, Whoa! I, 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 like, just 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 take it easy. <laughs> just 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 watch. Just watch and just take it easy. No one can hear what you're referring to. <laughs> Oh really? Is it? Yeah, no. Okay, well, there's a guy no, in the no, first no, no. row that keeps saying things like, that are not. They're totally. No, I'm joking. They're Everyone fine. Can. Like I'll go. No one hey, likes I it. don't get shoes, and I'm like the left one or the right one. <laughs> All right. So the, there's a there, there's a voice. It's like it's like. I could tell from a crable zone. Oh, you not tell no one. Dan Harmon, Dan Harmon. And I'm like, oh my. <laughs> Jeff did a thing. Five dollars. No, but that's so terrifying. It's in another language. All right. Well, uh, so obviously, like. Wait. So what? What happened? I'm well, sorry. No, you can't. What, what were you doing? What were I you was, doing? I was. I was creating magical comedy. No, what's in your opinion? What are you doing? Jeff you're, you're, Davis. You're, 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 I'm trying to connect oh. with people. <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing admirably you're, given the you're doing great. circumstances. Don't you yeah. think I'm up against shit? Tonight? I know you're you're always every night you're I mean every Monday night you're absolutely up against shit. Probably other nights too, but definitely Monday nights. I'm seeing it right now. Palpably, yeah. Yeah. 
So, like, you're in a French airport, a French-controlled airport. In the middle of a... Oh, somebody, oh, somebody, oh, somebody, oh, Dan Harmon, Dan Harmon. It's scary. I'm like, I do, it's like so hard to, like, like, I'm getting through, I go up to the counter, like, Cody's back there, like, they called my name. My name's never been called. Like, I, I always thought that when they called your name, it was because, like, you weren't there for something or you were going to lose your seat. And I got all the way up to the <laughs> counter. It was so, I mean, the amount of people whose lives I impinged upon I, I like my like bags hitting babies' heads. I, I because I'm like I'm I'm like I don't understand. I got a foot. And everyone's like standing. They're just they're just standing because all they know is that the people are speaking in French and what they're saying is that the plane's gonna take off. And so everyone's just compressed like a fucking like Lego sculpture. Like and and so you have to like. You have to like actively mush through that if yeah. they go like Dan Harmon, Dan Harmon, <laughs> and, and I'm like, like I can't. All I, I have no choice. I would never do this to anyone. I, I, I ran my American Express card. Nay, my assistant did. I like, like I, I don't. I did this. I, I subscribe to a tier of human experience that doesn't involve me ever touching you or you touching me. I am in the mi I am like trying to bustle like like every single human being is like has a right to look at you like what are you doing you horrible ferret like like, like why are you fucking mushing me and touching my child's head and like fucking like and I'm like I I just want to say to all of them uh. like I don't want to do this they called my name at the desk that says whether you can get on the plane or not. And I was just like, like oh, excuse me, s'il vous plaît, uh, about your baby's head, and you're like, I'm sorry, and someone took a shit on the floor, and it's because, and I get all the way up to the thing, and they're like, uh, I, I said, you called my name, and I, uh, Monsieur Harmon? Yeah, and they're like, eh, just checking. Uh. For real, for I swear to Christ, they literally said just checking. W w were they worried about you? Or? I don't fucking know. I'll never know, because as soon as they said it, I'm like, just checking. I don't think like I feel like Liam Neeson and Taken. Like I'm worried. Like is Cody like part of a white slavery ring now? Like I just left her. Like I, d d you don't understand. These airports are un-American. <laughs> They're downright French. <sighs> you know they 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 uh, their their toast is weird even. Uh, it's soft. <sighs> we like hard toast. <laughs> American toast, we call it. I may never. I I, I just I, it's it's weird. It's like. I, I love wanna, American toast. I love it too. Yeah. None of that soft shit. It, it, it's got no maple syrup on it. Yeah. Fucking... Oh, but anyways, oh, the reason I was bringing that up was because we were in that position, and then we we're like, we sat down eventually in this like terminal, and we we're like, we're like, God damn, this place, it's like, it keeps you on a razor's edge. Like, you don't know the language, so you're like listening. You, you know, when the people are speaking English over the uh, intercom, it's like, already muddled, and you're like, I, for me, I'm on edge all the time. I'm like, I don't understand what the fuck you're saying. Eat the fucking mic. What are you saying? At this point in time, I'd like to raise a emergency. If you want to stand up right now, get over to the gate. If you're a Vietnam veteran, and everyone's just like... Like, understandably goes, look, man, I, I understand, like, hierarchy in one of two ways. Either, either everything's taken care of because I have no autonomy, or I fucking, like, nothing's taken care of because I have all autonomy. Your airlines tell you everything, you, you have no autonomy and nothing's taken care of. They tell you, well, that'll be 300 bucks to go to Seattle. If someone pays 3,000 bucks, they have a right to tell you you're a piece of shit. We're not gonna police it though. Like, like now boarding. Now I was in the world to my toes. My tips would be miserable. And now imagine that in French. And then I'm like, I'm like sitting down with Cody. I'm like, God damn, it just gives me so much fucking anxiety. And she's like, and Cody goes, Yeah, well, 
the one sunny side of the street is at least we're away from those fucking sneezing people. Oh. <laughs> like, you know, at airport terminals, they like the seats are back to back. <laughs> like the the absolutely like yeah. the, there was just like. Hatcha! They, like, of course that family's traveling with you. They're on their way to the fucking America. All right. Dallas. It was really funny. Uh, look, we got off on the wrong foot. It's 2019. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I had a hard time traveling. Uh, I don't like other white people, I guess. I don't know what, what, what my point is. But you, you hate airlines. You, like, you, you have I a hate real, airlines. You, yes. hate, you hate air. A, a lot of people have anxiety when they're doing air travel. And so like, you're expressing your anxiety about what a lot of people have anxiety about. At, when, when all of us travel, we all have a hard time. Like we, you're subjected to obviously a dehumanizing event. And I, I, I yes, I, I guess I'm a, a speaking from a place of privilege or whatever, where I'm like, you know, I don't get it. Like I only leave my house for one thing. And then it's like, and then I always like go, hey, Send them a million dollars in advance. Like, when I get there, could they just treat me like a fucking, like, something above a mosquito? And the answer is always, like, absolutely not, no. <laughs> like, happy to take your money. Very enthusiastic about that. Oh, did you want the leg extendable package where you can extend your human legs to a point where you don't actually sustain permanent uh, uh, damage? Uh, sure, no, 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 that's a million dollars. We'll take that million dollars. Thank you so much for flying American Airlines. We love your million dollars. So remember, we're the airline where you can extend your legs a little bit. And then you get there and they're just like, hey, who are you? What the fuck's going, who the fuck are you? Slow down, whoa, 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 whoa. Take your fucking shoes off and get the fuck back in line, you piece of shit. And you're like, whoa, I fucking paid a lot of money. And they're like, that's not us, it's Uncle Sam. Get your fucking shoes off. And I'm like, okay, I get it. It's the government, that's cool. That's fucking cool, that's all right. Still a little bit of back and forth. Each airline, they pick and choose whether or not you get to the, oh, here's my shoes, I gotta go, people. Get your name, get your number, gotta go. Don't care where you go, but you can't stay here. What's that, a zipper on your jacket? I'm a fucking idiot. It's humiliating, and it shouldn't be required necessarily to go visit Grandma for Christmas. I, 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 I don't see, I, they've tricked us into thinking that they're doing us a favor, but there's money changing hands. So where's the favor here? But you, like, you, you have a, an irrational hatred of airlines. I have an aggressive yeah. hatred of airlines, yeah. because if I'm gonna die, right. and I am, yeah. I would like... <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it like that. Spencer seconds that motion. Oh, sorry. Right. I didn't mean it like that. Okay, let's walk through this for a second. <laughs> like, 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 hey, uh, uh, anybody... Uh, uh, you like this podcast, right? Like, some people pay for the podcast. You paid to get in here, right? So, like, uh, 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 okay. Uh, I'm going uh, gonna to put you in a metal tube... And I'm gonna fling you into the air. And uh, if you even talk, I've talked to like aerodynamics like engineers, like because I'm always like, what the fuck is going on? How are we in the air? I, I, I do you, you ever talk to no. you, you ever you ever talk to like a person that went to school for this shit? They always tell you, they go like, well, no, it's it's really not that big a deal. It, it, the you know the uh, big things on the wings, like they suck in the air and then they push it out the other side. That's how you stay there. What? Where's the air coming from? Well, you're in the air. It's like, it's like a paper airplane. It's like a paper airplane! It's like a paper airplane! It, it's not... Pass! A... Pass! 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 <laughs> well, then you can't... Oh, good luck. I guess your grandma's gonna die without talking to you about your... Okay, I'll get on a fucking... Fly. I gotta get on a flight to talk to my grandma. Just oh, of course I have a choice. It's like, a, it's like every, uh, every industry. Well, I'd like to go visit my grandma. Uh, which airline treated me well? <laughs> Again, everything you're doing is exactly as what I'm thinking, but stop, stop. <laughs> but it's like, you can't go to an airport and go, I, like every industry that did this to you, like, they would be outlawed. You can't go to an airport and go, my grandma died? <laughs> I need to get to Seattle by nine o'clock. 
Like any other industry, like five companies would be like, hey, grandma died. Like, get on the fucking grandma caravan. Like, we're going to give you a face mask. We're going to think. And then other, the price fixing thing would be like, they would compete with each other. Like, I don't mean to be a libertarian, but fuck you. Like, the, <laughs> like don't fucking give an industry, like, the ability to not compete with each other. But is, Dan, honestly, are, are you just, like, admit that you, you're just a nervous traveler. And, and you're freaking out about the fact that, yes, travel is, is tedious and there's lots of uh, hoops to jump through, but you, you're just a nervous traveler and you're... How is that different from, from being a nervous eater? Are you a nervous eater? If you go to a restaurant and you go like, I'm sorry, like, like, I don't want to eat something that's going to kill me. Or I don't want to. I don't, don't want to eat like something that has a bunch of bones in it. Is, are you the asshole if the restaurant's like, yeah, well, fuck you. You wanted to eat. It's three o'clock. Fuck off. Yeah, but that that that's not parallel to what you're talking it's about. It's absolutely parallel. If I if I want to go to my grandma's funeral and it's in Texas and it's at a certain time, I have absolutely no choice over which airline I travel on. I don't have any choice at all. They have a monopoly. So, They're so, a cartel. So it's not it's not about your nerves about traveling and, and being. Yeah, I a, don't want to die at the hands of fuckwads. Like like I, I like I, I want I want the skies to be filled with planes. <laughs> um, and, and I, I, I want I want I want when I, I want to go to the airport. And, and I, I, want, I, want, I want people to be standing outside the airport and be like, hey, man, hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Let me hook you up. And I'll be like, what's going on here? It's like, where are you going? Well, your grandma died? I'll get you there. Oh, come on. Let me tell you what you got. I'll be like, well, hold on a second. What's this guy saying? And it's like, yo, man, your grandma died? I'll fucking hook you up. Like, right. let me tell you what. Uh, we're showing a Steve Carell movie. We're going to fucking rub your feet. <laughs> like, like, I want to fucking shop around. It's an American right. You spilled so much vodka during this... <laughs> It's good, it's good. How is anyone, how, how am I the is, only one outraged by this? It's true, no, I'm, I agree. It doesn't make it's any bad. sense. It's literally like, I understand. You. It's a, like, Drink you your understand? vodka. Drink your vodka. You're spilling so much. It's They're fine. selling you the I'm worried about right your vodka. to visit your children in Seattle, but you'd have no choice. And then you get on the plane. Wait, I thought the peak, when I saw them suffocate a dog, I was like, well, that ought to wake up a few no, Senate no. hearings. Are da you, da are you fucking kidding me? You're, you're, like, they I beat a man half to death and dragged him off a plane. These are terrible corporations. Yeah, they get together and compare. You're how just much a nervous traveler. You, you're saying that you're not a nervous traveler. <laughs> Why can't you're those just both a be nervous true. traveler? Terrified guests. It could be both. You hate it. it you hate both. traveling. You hate being at an airport. You hate being on a plane. Why can't it be both? Who loves them? I like. Why is it? Why I, should they be able to take money from you well, I love, and then, I love and then turn you loose against each other? Like, like when Nabisco so, says to half the population or 30% of the population, hey, welcome to a new white chocolate luxuriant experience. Like, they don't say, hey, do you like white chocolate? Uh, we'll take your money. Give us a subscription to chocolate. And if you want to make sure it's white, uh, fight the people that like regular chocolate. Just fight them for it because I, it's first come first serve. I'm almost certain this metaphor holds up. <laughs> like the, the airline industry is the only sheltered, totally non-capitalistic, like fucking sheltered weird biodome where a classist society is allowed to you're thrive. You're just afraid of flying. Just say that Why you don't can't like it to be, be both? on a plane. Why can't it be both? By the way, how do these fucking things stay in the air? That's the ultimate outrage. You're selling a dream. It's a giant piece of metal. It shouldn't be in the air. Why can't it be both things? Yeah, it's a fucking travesty. Right. What are I, you I, slingshot? Are you I take shooting it back. people in the I air? I take it back. You love flying. You love flying. I, don't, I love being on the plane. I love Minecrafting. I, I like, 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 give It's true. <laughs> He's right. You're, you're just, right. A, you're just terrified of travel or, or being around other people. You, you're, ter you're terrified. But that's of, of being crammed into a small space with other people. But also, you? he's being no, oppressed by to... corporate entities that are conspiring to fuck America also, and other I, I've countries. Never seen, and they, I've, and they, I've never seen Dan do that people. dance before. They are hurting people. They're, they're beating them up people. and killing they, animals. They tased a man and punched his face until his face was bleeding and dragged him off a plane. And the corporation that did that 
is doing just as much business as they they're were. legally they're, empowered like, to do that. That doesn't fuck with you when you're like listening to their safety video. That doesn't fuck with you a little bit. No, that it's you're bad. like, oh well, when push comes to shove, literally, you will have police come on board the plane and drag a man off the plane. Like, and 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 then they're like. Don't forget to blow your lollipop if we if we if we fucking have an oversight. Come on, man! Like like we risk our lives. Like it's like, like we jam into a metal tube and they shoot us like a lawn dart across the country. Like we gotta do it or grandma will yell at us. Like like so we gotta do it and then they, and it's like you can't you don't get a choice when you're like your grandma's sick and you you go online and you're like my grandma's sick so I gotta I gotta go to from L A to Seattle. You don't get to fucking choose. You definitely do not get to choose like how you travel. Like they, the, the, you're, the, the, they'll say, oh, uh, this airline will go from LA to Seattle. And, the, and like, they'll fucking lie to you. They'll go like, you, you can't even, like imagine the shit that's a variable. Like you go like, I'm gonna go from LA to Seattle to see my grandma get buried. And then you're like, I'm going to bring my to laptop. See, to see your grandma get married? And then you get on the buried. plane. The premise is that you're, gonna, you're going to see your grandma plane, get married. And buried. then you get on the plane and you're like, what the fuck do I plug in my laptop? I thought, I thought I could plug in my fucking laptop. And you're like, or it's uh, broken. Uh, flight attendant. And, and, and they're like, what? <laughs> what? And you're like, I just don't, can't plug in. And I was like, it doesn't work that way. Fuck off, you piece of shit. And you're like, Okay, I guess I I guess I fucked up. I guess I just fucked up. I Ma guess they maybe, just changed the model of plane. Like it maybe you shouldn't fly anymore. Maybe that's not your thing. Yeah, no, those are my choices. Like I should not fly anymore, or I should Get love up. the company that's been assigned to me. That's great. Like 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 like. Hey, maybe you shouldn't drink water anymore. Uh, 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 or hey. Fucking take it the way Nestle gives it to you. Yeah, I, I, it makes sense. If you want to travel across the country, which could mean the difference between you getting fired or promoted, maybe you should, if you're so passionate about whether or not you don't want to be treated like an animal, maybe you shouldn't fly. That makes sense. Like, hey, maybe if you don't like technology, just why don't you ride a horse around in a circle while everyone takes a train across the country? Yeah, let's, look, your side of the argument doesn't need any fucking support. It's called entropy or evolution. <laughs> like, call it whatever you want, but it's the side that doesn't need any help. Uh, I, I'm over here with the other people getting sneezed on and going like, We all get Wait, sneezed on. We all get yelled at. We... Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. It's, it's all chaos. I, like, 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 I'm like, yeah, you know what would be nice is if airline companies were like, oh, shit, we're going to go out of business unless we treat these people like human beings. Fucking Zagnut has to hold themselves to that standard. Are you kidding wait, me? Wait, you don't wait, recognize Wait, wait, wait. The... W walk me through that, Zach. You get Matt. a fucking refund. Does anybody... If you make socks, tuna, chairs, anything, <laughs> like, there is literally one industry that where, where they're like, oh, did you get a suffocated dog? Shit, so sorry. Anyways, hey, sold to the mother. There's one industry that's allowed to do that. The airline industry. That's it. And they have that, like, it always, I always bristle in the speech or the video where they're like, you know, you got to legally comply with all commands. That means, like, if there's someone on the power trip who's like, hey, bark like a dog, you piece of shit. Like, technically speaking, by the law, you would have to do that. Otherwise, they could then call security to beat you up and drag you tased out of a build, you know, out of the plane. I don't like, like I, I don't think that'll ever happen, but when I watch that stuff, it's like, yeah, that's what they're saying is, yeah, technically speaking, we will tell you whatever you, uh, you we want you to do and we'll beat you up, which I mean, is the law. It's a it's scary. I don't I mean, like the fact I don't that like there's, it, there's, there's a couple all. airlines that their safety video is a rap or like uh, there's there's robots and like if you see uh, something coming out of the air, you have to put a life vest un under your chair, and then you have to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that's straight up virgin. Like, yeah, yeah, I, for, who for, we yeah. missed out there out I mean, of business. I mean, 
I, 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 we all sing along to it. It's like, but this isn't saving anybody's lives. This is this is absolutely madness. Here's the thing. So we talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know, like like they they make these videos. Like, Virgins was good. I was like, I would watch. No, Virgins, I disagree like, with that. For I'm sure. annoyed with it, or I'm not creatively. But I'm like, they didn't make any mistakes. The people in charge of whether I live or die sought to make a little choreography thing, mm -hmm. and I'm not seeing any evidence that translates into Jesus Christ. How are you going to get the landing gear down? Compare that to what's the one where it's like the George Gershwin thing, where they're like, or no, no, no. What's the one that's like the ripoff of Michelle Gondry? What's the airline that where it's like the the brunette uh, flight attendant is like. Is that American? I think it might be. It's like a Michelle Gondry thing where she's like the the like very charismatic brunette. It's like, hey, welcome to whatever this airline is. And she's like, now let me walk you through it. And then she walks through and it's like the stepped out Gondry-esque thing where there's like stop motion involved, but there's also like live action. And it's like, but it's like you're watching it and you're like, oh, they fucked up that take. So then they just shortcut it. And I'm like, what are they going to do if we fly into a mountain? All right. <laughs> Yeah. Like I, I mean, you're inviting me to make that scrutiny. Like, don't, don't, don't fucking. Yeah. All you gotta do is like have a person like on the video screen go, "Hi, my name's Gary. I'll fly your plane. I promise to do it safe." Like, like, <laughs> it, if during that video he's like, "Hi, my name's Gary. I promise to fly your plane. F not plane. Fuck, 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 fuck. Take it again," and they keep it in. I have a right to be like, "What the fuck am I on?" I, I, I had to do it. And the flight attendant would be like, well, he's not an actor. He's a pilot. I'm like, yeah, but your company doesn't give a fuck. I, I had to do it. We were flying from somewhere to somewhere, like over the Rockies. And, and the guy, uh, I think we're leaving out of either like Nevada or Arizona. And the guy had cowboy boots on. And he was our oh. pilot. And he got in there and he sounded like Yosemite Sam. <laughs> and he got in there and he goes, listen up, everyone. We're going to go through some... Extreme turbulence. So I want you to put your seatbelts on. I want you to strap them in real tight because we're you're, you're going to be bouncing all over the joint. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, 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 the telemetry from the three planes ahead of us says we're going to go through some real tough stuff. And it, this is not a joke. He goes, put your put your seatbelts on and strap them down low and tight. And he wasn't joking. We were we were fucking all over the joint. I just and, 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 and he was he's he kept laughing during his like. I wasn't lying to you, was I? I think I love that. that I love that, that. that. That's a good pilot because I need we that. had Yosemite Sam at the fucking. Controls. I don't like when they don't say anything. It's like fuck. Like like, we, like coming back from Tahiti, it was like fucking everywhere. And I was Cody was out like a light, and I was like, oh my god! Like the the pilot would come on and be like. It could be from my crib, the window, uh, yeah, Mr. Bean and Jerry Lewis. And, and I was like, like, I don't know what this guy's saying. He might be like, I got to admit to you, I'm a little bit afraid right now. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, like, I, his tone of voice was just polite and French. And I was like, I, everyone was asleep. And I'm like, am I the only one that knows we're going to die? <laughs> I, I do need, I, uh, I was listening to a radio lab about War of the Worlds today. And they touched on just this idea of the pa patriarchal kind of like, the idea of the news industry, the, 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 the male father figure going, first of all, everything's fucked. Second of all, it's okay, I'm in charge. And how that's being sold, like how we created that with the news industry and things. Like you, you, if you heard a woman's voice, like you have to ask yourself, like if you heard a female pilot's voice, like it's a psychosexual mm -hmm. like thing to ask yourself, like what, what do we need from news anchors, pilots, and things? Like, how much are you being sold? You have everything to fear, but I'm here with you. I'm Lu Wolf Blitzer. Like, you're gonna, you're about to see a flash in the background. I, I, it, it, I would love a Yosemite Sam guy going like, oh, whoa, this one's a hopper. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I do need that because I, I was, I was like, I. Why am I in charge of when something goes wrong? Which is what the, the, the good horror movie or narrative like does to you is it takes your it takes your guardian away. Did, did, have I told the story before about the time I thought we were going to crash on a plane? Uh, my friend Frank Maciel. You Maybe, but do I think we should hear it again. It was but, a, but, no, but, I'm going to pour the, a drink while you tell it. The, the, the theme of the story was that you're amazing and you don't fear death. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll take you to the very end of it. It was a, 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 like we were going to land in Chicago. We couldn't, so we went to Indiana. I, if, 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 have I told the story a thousand times before? I think just once in You've really once long ago. But, but, but just to go to the, no, yeah, to, 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 to the very end, it was the women that were the flight attendants that were on board that made everybody feel safe. 
And we felt secure and happy because these women that were like veteran, like flight attendants have been through it all. We go, if they're not nervous, we're not nervous. And when we landed, um, the, the woman came on the uh, comm and said, we're back in uh, Indiana. Oh my God. And that's when, th that's when we all shit our pants. Because we're like, oh, she was nervous too? Like, like, like she, we, we all thought we were going to die. We thought she didn't think we were going to die. Right. Then we uh, found out she thought we were going to die, and she is a fucking badass. Like, she's John Wayne from fucking The, like, the, the Longest Day. Uh, like, 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 we, all, like, we all thought we were going to die, and she told us so at the very end. Oh, God damn it. Let it go. It's the <laughs> let it go. Okay. Uh, let, uh, we're, this is a nice segue into our next segment, which is Dan Recommends Podcasts. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you know the etymology of the word posh? No. I, I, uh, no. I thought it was a spice. <laughs> it's an acronym. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to this new true crime podcast that's two British ladies, and uh, uh, one of them shared this. Posh is an acronym. For? In, in the uh, olden days, when getting too much sun was a definite gateway to being perceived as poor... Uh, uh, and people started to travel by boat, like as an upper class thing. Uh, you, it, it, it was about the strategy of when to keep the sun on your face and when to keep it off your face. Posh stands for portside over starboard home. It's the side of the boat oh. that you sit on. Uh, you don't want to get too much of a tan. Right, uh, so crossing over from England to the, side to, over the to the continent. To wherever Port you're going. So left side uh, uh, going out. Right Starboard home. home. To keep the sun off you? I guess. Right, wow. that would be the shady side and that's of the posh. boat, I guess. Wow. Isn't that a that's fucking amazing? Said. That's one of those things like where people... Now, what, I, I, what, what does Crazy Spice stand for? <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, that segues me into like, my, my Signal Boost podcast of the... like I, I've listened to so many true crime podcasts, but like... I can't like like I found this one red-handed. It's these two British ladies, uh, um, I, and I, I I like in the height of my enthusiasm for them, uh, I'll give them the offer that I've given to David Cummings to come out. I was like, uh, uh, Sharuti and Hannah, if uh, if this gets back to you and you want to fly first class to the states and and be a guest on the show, like I'll. Uh, worth it. You've given me so much. Like, I'd love to chat with you. Also, uh, any, any of our fans, if you want to come out first class, Dan Harmon will pay for you no, to come out. No, not, so. not anybody. I, it's, this is my thing as I extend this invitation to uh, certain people. I, I, it's just such an amazing... If, it, in this world of, like, I don't know when true crime is going to hit its peak. I think it's so funny. Like, I just... Me and Cody listen to true crime podcasts. It's all we do. We gobble them up. We run out of everyone. And, like, every single one is on a different podcast network, and every single podcast network has um, advertisements for different ones where they're like, hey, just a couple words from some of our friends. I was like, I can't. It seems like there's got to be more true crime podcasts than there are people willing to listen uh, or that have ever been murdered by anything. And it's so... <laughs> Uh, but I haven't hit my peak. I just keep going, like, all right, let's listen to them. But, like, these advertisements. The, the one thing that's really funny to me is I kind of want to grab people and shake them and go, please stop pretending this isn't ghoulish. I, 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 I guess the new wave is like, hey, we're going to talk about true crime. You're going to hear about strangulation and rape and murder. But... It's because victims need not be forgotten. Uh, uh, like, 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 they put this twist on it where it's like, we're doing a service. I'm like, well, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but come on. That's not what this, come on. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll go to sleep on my couch and watch some Datelines, but I cannot do the Keith Morrison, the fucking guy. I fucking want to, I hate I feel, I feel like, I feel like, like, like Ooh, perfectly good and, and, uh, but podcasts what happened? about people and getting murdered. Why didn't it happen? Are, are ruined by people that are like, oh, well, we should make sure. I'm going that we... to keep doing my Keith Morrison impression while fair. you're talking. That's wonderful. That's but is, is it good to do a Keith Morrison impression while Dan Harmon is talking? Yeah, we don't know. Well, maybe, maybe it's not. I listen to this But is it good to do it again? <laughs> the world may know. 
I've been listening to this podcast called The Dream Podcast, and I recommend it highly. It's about multi-level marketing and how uh, it affects people, and it's crazy. It's apparently all a big scam. Um, the only reason it's still around today is because there's this big court case that the people were about to, to go to jail, but they had like deep uh, ties to like the government and stuff. So they kind of like got the court case thrown out. And then in that court case, they were like, well, check it out. Here's the rules for what is and isn't a multi-level marketing scam. And we don't do that. So we're in the clear. And they're like, yep, you're in the clear. And then it turned out they made up those rules to prove that they didn't. And no one has rules on what is or isn't a multi-leveling scam. So like that's now the new legal definition is what the MLMs like made to be uh, to avoid. And they're like, we aren't that. And that's why we're not breaking the law. But it's just fundamentally a fraud by the me mechanics of the business itself. And the only reason that it can't always be prosecuted is because um, there's not always sufficient evidence to prosecute businesses and stuff. But it's all fundamentally a fraud. And it's crazy because it's like it's all this crazy capitalist stuff where everyone's just like preying on people as a business and it gets into like uh, sexism because there's all these men who prey on women and get them involved and so they're making men money for the w men but it like it's secret and so it's like this weird thing that affects like women and I don't know it just it, it, it takes money out of both sides of the family it's just this really insidious thing that seemed to completely uh, grasp all of American business and now American politics and it's uh, it's I don't know it's like you find out like every problem we have is kind of all connected to the same problems and it's like holy shit to the idea that we we aren't able to recognize what is essentially a not even capitalism it's like a pyramid scheme or yeah well that's the thing is that like the multi-level market marketing companies that have gotten away with it for so long basically <laughs> integrated <laughs> have basically <Sorry. laughs> we could make that work we just need to keep it rolling for long don't make it. Work. Yeah, no, I know. I'm trying. I'm trying to be helpful. Um, yeah. No, but I, I, I hit the thing by accident. No, no, I believe it. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Anyway, <laughs> you, you, the I, burden I, of I, proof I, is on you to prove that you're not just jealous of Spencer taking the conch. No, no I, 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 I was trying to look for the. Uh, the D and D theme, in case we wanted to play. Yeah, D &D. that makes some. Well, sense. that actually now brings to mind like you were going to do that, and it was going to kind of you. Were, that was Spencer no, no, face. I, you were going to commit Spencer face. I, I was I was scrolling through, and I hit the I hit the wrong thing. Uh, you you backed me up on this airline thing. Oh yeah, no. I, the airlines. I'm sorry. As long as Spencer again, agrees again, with me, I was just trying to do my job as a comptroller. That one's good. Okay, look, here's the thing. It's 2019. Like, I'm not a big uh, resolution <laughs> guy, but like something that like I've been really remiss about. Um, we've been, as we've gone on, we love doing this podcast. It's amazing. Uh, we've concretized it. We've incorporated it, whatever. We're trying to we make it like a, a, a self-sufficient like little biodome of like podcastery. Everybody that works on it, hopefully, is getting paid to work on it. Uh, part, of, part of that was like, coming up with paperwork and signing contracts. It's an arduous process. It takes the joy out of everything. Uh, of course, you can't just like do something for fun. And, uh, someone's going to get end up getting fucked over. We, the, the, uh, we, we've been trying for years now. Like we, we're like, oh, it's a business. It's Harmontown Incorporated. And give this to that person. Give that to this person. Along the way, I think one of the funnier things is like one of our silent partners, Kevin Day, who runs the ins and outs of like, you know, like, like me pumping the show out. He's, he's like, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to make him a target, but he's pretty Bitcoin rich. He's like kind of like, he doesn't really need the, the, the bottom line is like at a certain point during the incorporation of the podcast, he's sort of like, yeah, I have a problem. I, uh, I need some of the money to go away. Like, 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 and we came up with this thing. Kevin, can you, can you come up? Can you come up and talk about our thing? <laughs> Kevin Day, everybody. Yeah. Talk about how to give your yeah. money away. So we had talked about, like, because basically, like, if you were to do nothing at all, given your situation, if you were to take in money from the business venture that we had to create in order to make the thing, 
you would get penalized. That's this is a common theme of capitalism. Yes. You need a write off. You need a thing. And you're like, look, here's here's something that we can't do, both ethically and legally. We can't say to our podcast audience, if you subscribe to the podcast, some of your money will go to take care of uh, Down syndrome, which uh, many podcasts do, but is illegal. I think, well, whether it's illegal or not, I don't actually know about the legality of it, but I do know that actually, as a as a pseudo capitalist, I would actually say, honestly, you know. <sighs> If you're asking someone for five dollars, uh, shouldn't they have a choice as to whether or not one of their five dollars goes to this or that? It, 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 but but like, what we came upon was like you're you're going to suffer in silence unless we give some of your money away every month. Correct. And so we came up with this idea. It's like let's pick a charity every month, and we can renew it at the end of every month. But let's pick let's pick something that your money goes to because you don't need it. And you need to write it off. Let's just get it out of your hands so you don't get penalized for it. Right. Like, what I really wanted to do was, like, what other podcasts do, was say that we were going to donate 10% of whatever to some charity. And as you brought up, that's a really bad idea because people right. might cancel. You know, they, they don't want to subscribe. Right, so, yeah, I would it, like to think that there is such a thing as a Republican Harmontown fan who's like, look, I don't truck with this or that, but, like, don't... P- don't don't put me in a position where I feel like literally my money helps uh, something that I don't believe in. I, if they want to listen to me t- say they're stupid and pay five dollars, like that should be their right. Yeah, right. It feels like an ethical thing to me. It's where ethics and capitalism intersect. So right. and so and so, I think the nice thing is that we go look. This is a if you're if you're a, a, a right wing person and you're like I don't want my money going to anything. Look, trust me, your money's going to me and Jeff getting drunk and dying. Uh, I promise. Anything left over? We're, it's, 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 suppo- it's going to a private citizen who's our silent partner, Kevin Day. Kevin, now, who has no political affiliation, he doesn't care. He, what he said to me is he's willing to, we're going to find a charity eat every once in a while, we're going to funnel your money into that charity. Right. I'm donating the money, but I'm letting Dan pick where it goes. It's, okay. It's, it's all going to the Proud Boys. <laughs> they just, they just, if they could read, they, <laughs> they ju- it's not fair we, what's we happening tr- to them. We try to represent the, the no, I'm, um, I'm joking, now you I, fucking my first... Now we will do it. Now we are going to, it's too late. Now we're giving the money to the Proud Boys for real. <laughs> where are the Proud just Boys Just because go? of that. I honestly do think, as a side argument, that that's probably the quickest way to defuse some of these pockets of toxic dudes. Is that you actually just give them a million dollars? Because wouldn't they just? It would be Sierra They'd Madre. They that. would just kill each other. Go like, I want this big of a flashlight. No, it should be. <laughs> like they, they'd be like, No, it's too dark. I want it to be whiter. And they'd be like, Fuck you, racist. And they just it, like you could give give bad people a million dollars. They're toast. But we're not doing that. I, I he, here's my my thing that I've always been passionate about, always been passionate about in giant air quotes because I do nothing to do anything. But like maybe this mechanism could help us. Or I said to you, prison reform. This is the thing that I'm like really like kind of like I because I feel like it's like easy to not do. Like I I feel awful about the fact that we, when, when somebody fucks up in life, I don't care how bad they are, I don't care how evil they are, it's not about whether you're a good person or a bad person. If you end up in our system, like where we have decided as a society, this is how it works, I don't like the fact that you get locked up and then your nightmare begins and that, and that you're like deprived of shit that like maybe could help you like, I don't I, like like I don't like that you can't get D and D books in prison. I don't like that you, I don't I don't I don't like that we joke about oh well where you're going you're gonna get raped every day and it's like well that what's not part of the judge's sentence. <laughs> like, but I, just in general I think we have like a fucked up twisted idea of like it's like if we're a, a society that's gonna lock up almost all the people in the world like. It, 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 that's my thing. I real and so I told you that like two hours ago. I was like, look up prison reform. <laughs> yes, and so we may pick a charity tonight where we're like, sounds like this. All right, all right. Here's where Kevin Day's money is going. And on the Reddit, you may go. I looked them up. They're terrible. They're fake. Okay, let's find that out in real time. 
right. let's 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 popularize the idea of charity shopping. So I, I, I came down to, to two options I wanted to give you. Uh, the first is the probably more well-known and much bigger, but not exactly what you were asking for. It's called the Innocence Project. Right. And their job is mostly, they go to people who, basically everybody looks at and goes, there's no way this person was guilty, but they're sat with a life prison, prison sentence. They go to, you know, get sentences overturned. And right. they're very big, and they all seem to be one of the most effective charities. And they've, they've regularly been recognized for dollars going to them does the most good. I don't so, want to. Okay, 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 thank you for. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm. Uh, is I, I. I'm actually more invested in like how do we treat like the bad people. I. Yeah. I, 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 I yes. want the guilty people to not have to like. In addition to doing their time and serving their, mm -hmm. I, I. I. I would like it if they could like fucking learn a trade and like and like not live in fear. But but yes, I love the Innocence Project. Obviously, and arguably a great thing, but. Right. So the one closer to, I think, what you're asking for is a similar project called the Sentencing Project that seems to have two goals. One is to give, make sure people get fair sentences because too often people are you know, thrown in some maximum security prison for something that was not needed. And second, one of their goals is, while people are incarcerated, making sure that prisons are not more likely to produce good results than people are, are, are let out, you know, making sure things are not cruel, making sure education is available, making sure that, you know, job training is made available and things like that. So they sort of seem to have a two-pronged approach of make sure people's sentences are appropriate. How do they do that in a world where it's like state to state, city to city? Like, how do they? <laughs> um, from the literal five minutes I've read about them. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's part of the joke is that I made you do this because yeah. I'm so charitable <laughs> that I'm like... This lazy. Um, they meet with district attorneys a lot. Uh, they have provided information to states and counties and things like that about, you know, are you aware of the sentencing guidelines you, you guys have and what that produces and how this person here, because of the guidelines that, that exist in this jurisdiction, result in a 20-year maximum security, you never see your friends the entire time you're in jail, when other states are doing things more fairly, and here's how well this has worked, and here, you know. So they present information to the people who make sentencing decisions to allow them some of the visibility they may not see they're themselves. Trying, it's like an awareness thing almost, where they're like, hey, judge, hang them high. Yes. And hey, uh, uh, prosecuting attorney, uh, hang them high. Like, you, you're getting votes and you're getting promotions by this idea that you're tough on crime, but... But like, it's not working. Can we make you aware of the fact that it's slowly making your city, for instance, like have like recidivism rates that are super high? Correct. And uh, they, they've also done work to where you know they've taken prisoner complaints that have gone unheard of. You know this this policy this prison has is unfair and just mean spirited for no good reason. And they've stepped in. They've filed lawsuits. They've helped people. Um, how do we penetrate that barrier where like once you get locked up? everybody outside is like, fuck that person. And you're like, can I get a toothbrush? And they're like, fuck you. And then someone's like, I want to beat you up because you're Dan Harmon and you've been locked up. And you're like, whoa, this isn't part of my sentence. And they're like, who cares? Like, how can we make prisons less of a nightmare so I can proceed to get locked up? <laughs> I, I wish I had the answer. Yeah, I know. Okay. I, I, in the meantime, like, yeah, I guess out of the out of those two, the sentencing thing, like, like, sure, I guess if those guys have funding, they're going to be able to talk more to more bureaucrats. Let's give them a month, or uh, let's say a month, because a week is not long enough. Sure. So like, it's not if you're listening to the podcast, your money isn't your money isn't going anywhere. Your money's going into Harmontown's pocket, same as always. I'm only letting you know as part of the show that one of the people that takes the money from your pocket after everything's done is going to get fucked on his taxes. And so he's going to, for this month, give it to this random charity, which is called the Sentencing Project. Yes. Um, and we'll, maybe at the end of the, maybe a month from now, we'll go, here's how much money we gave them, and maybe we'll look into it. I actually honestly think, I'm not putting it on them, but I feel like the natural mechanism of the Reddit kind of mentality is someone's going to want to take this shit down, which I think could be a healthy mechanism. It's like an enzyme. Like, they'll research the organization. Let's find out, like, charities, like, let's find charities that we, that really do great. Like, for yes. every every dollar that you give them, what are they really doing to 
change a human life and stuff, but let's find ones that we're fans of, and this will be the first start of the project. Like, let's not be afraid to do it wrong. I, I, some of the, some of that, some of the, like, like I, that's why I don't even go down that road, is I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I got high with a guy the other day, explained to me that Red Cross is like the fucking oh, cle- yeah. kleptocracy. It's like, crazy. It, it kind of sterilizes, or, or, or paralyzes you. Charities uh, it, in America it, it, are fraught. You, you're like, you're like, yeah, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. You know, and like, it should be the opposite of that. Right. It should be like, an, it should be like, your natural state should be like, yeah, whatever. You should be kind of exuding shit. Yeah. Like in a post Patreon world. Have you gone to uh, proudboys.com? <laughs> very. I feel like, yeah. Okay. Well, th- so, so, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about, Kevin? Come on. <laughs> Share your deepest thoughts. My deepest thoughts. Hi. No. Um... Don't listen to him. He's, it's just like he can't, he can't control himself. Uh, yeah, well, I've been hearing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you live in Chicago usually, right? I do, I do. Um, uh, uh, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> you seem like a secretive guy. Like, you helped me. Were you, like, were you sad about that uh, field goal by the Bears the other day? I'm not a big football fan. Uh, good, so. good for you. Okay. Good for you. All right. No oh, heartbreak, yeah. Man. Yeah. We talked about the fact that the way that we really came... Did we talk about this in the podcast where you were like, hey, uh, do you own a, 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 a MacBook Pro and an iPad to and a thing and like a list of nine things and I was like yeah and you're like yeah uh, Cameron Diaz had you in her phone and like you're part of like Fapgate or whatever and you need to change your passwords like and I was like blah, blah, blah. yeah do you want me to explain that sure okay I think I just did but I was there and I didn't get that but uh, <laughs> uh, damn um, <laughs> I got it but I know what happened already right. So many, a few years ago, uh, there were some kind of high profile cases where celebrities were getting their iCloud and other accounts hacked. And what, what these attackers were doing, and, and there were multiple, would, they would break into one person's, you know, they would guess your iCloud password. And once they've done that, they can download a list of all of your contacts, all of your pictures, all of your email, a lot of really bad things of Dan's you don't want to see. Look, uh, my takeaway is Cameron Diaz has me in her phone. Right. So what, what happened, you know, they would break into one person's phone, and then from that, they would get a whole list of new email addresses and, emails. And, and everything else, and they would use that to try to break into others and break into others. And uh, a friend of mine who owns a bunch of web servers called me one day and said, hey, this one web server is acting really weird. It's making all these connections to iCloud, and we can't figure out why. And we went and looked at it and realized that it was being used to break into other people's accounts. And I had met Dan before and was looking through the list of people that it had broken into and I was looking at all of Dan's personal information. And so reached out to Dan and went, you really need to change your iCloud password because I got it. I got everything. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what did you see? Uh, everything. <laughs> No, uh, I made it a point not to specifically look, but just enough to prove that. It what really did was. you see? <laughs> <laughs> that picture, you was safe. Don't worry. <laughs> I like to say, and I remember calling you mm-hmm. when the Sony hack happened. I was like, Kevin. Yes. What it was North is Korea, happening right? with the Sony? Yeah, the North Korean Sony hack, whatever. Like, like I was like, I was in a fucking full blown panic. Here's why. Because if all of Sony's emails were hacked, that that includes every email that's received by Sony. That means that like I didn't know that the press and that the public was capable of being that av- like 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 that level of piglety, like like where it was like, hey, th- there's no uh, yeah, uh, these hackers like dumped this file online. Let's walk you through all of it. And the way like Amy Pascal was like, like hung out to dry was like we're actually like what you're proving here is that this this lady that like ran a studio that she made one joke that was like wouldn't it be off color if I said this to Obama it was like it's 9/11 right now by the way oh yeah great oh but no but like I, I I was like I was like holy <laughs> shit if one email that I ever sent to anybody at Sony like ever gets in the hands of TMZ like I'm so fucked like it would be such a weird out a of few. context thing. And I, I remember emailing you and like, like going like, just tell me. Like I just want to go know if I need to go home and blow my brains out. And you're like, there was one. His his email inbox was uh, deleted, 
at the time, but there, and there's one, I did do a search, there's one reference to you, it, it said that uh, uh, you're, you're a wild card. <laughs> it was just like them talking about me, I was like, oh, that was badass, yeah. yeah. But like, <laughs> Pretty much. Like yeah. a, single, a single email, I, and that's notable though, because it's like, it's not, it's, it's, it was like, I, there's something ethical about that, like, like, like look, I, like, I'm just saying, like, if you printed an email that I had sent to Sony while I was producing Community, it would, it would be grounds for, like, crucifying me. I feel <laughs> by our standards, but it's it's like I know the word context is now like a dinner bell that's rung by old fat white guys. So it's like you don't understand, um, but it's like wait a minute, like <laughs> I. The, the idea that I was a megalomaniac saying to a corporation, don't ever fucking tell me what to do or I'll fucking punch your teeth down your throat. Like, like at the time when I was typing that, it felt like a really heroic thing to be typing. <laughs> and six years later, the idea that that would be able to be pawed through by these clearly unscrupulous, like, uh, oh, I'm the rap.org and I'm a, oh, I'm banana peel.net net. Like, like, it was like, oh, look at what this guy said. I was like terrified. I guess I've been terrified ever since. If it helped, you sounded more sad than anything. There was only one email about you. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, no, I was relieved, believe, believe me. <laughs> Uh, uh, digital and uh, whatever. <laughs> All right, let's give it for Kevin Day. Kevin everybody. Day. Kevin everybody. Day. <laughs> and Dan, what a nice guy for coming up here and sharing his. Dan, can can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can I invite a friend up? Yeah. Maybe somebody you know. Maybe somebody you like. Somebody I know that I love. My favorite. Jesse Camp is in town. Oh, okay. Do you, yeah, do I you guys Jesse. Jesse Camp? Oh, Jesse, are you in town? Yeah. Jesse Camp. Jesse, come on up. Our favorite MTV come VJ man. extraordinaire. Just come out of hiding. Hey, man. If you don't know Jesse, you're about to fucking know him, and he's the greatest motherfucker in town. Howdy. Jesse, I told you to wear something nice. <laughs> well, this is from a uh, <laughs> Guidans, big and tall, in Reseda. The whole, they put the whole outfit together. They do me and AJ, Magic Johnson's gay son. <laughs> so, you know, between the two of us, a lot of business to, to them. If you're in, if you're in Van Nuys, Pacoima, that part of the valley, take a, take a visit. But, whew. When I first... The first, time, the first time I met you, Jesse, and I, I, I will retell the story, we were at a party in some shitty dirt backyard in Echo Park. Okay, yeah. At, at a backyard party, and Jesse had, I, I, I will tell you, lots of layers on. Yes. Because Jesse is all about the layers. And, 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 and Jesse comes in and goes, hey, man, I like your suit. And I said, I like your layers. And he goes, oh, man, you got to have layers. <laughs> and then... And then Harmon, Harmon met Jesse, and he's like, is this guy full of shit? Like, what the fuck is going on? And I then, think I probably said, like, is he later, doing a character? Yeah, is, is, like, is, is he doing a routine? This is a bit. And then Dan, a half hour later, hung out with, had hung out with Jesse and came up to me and goes, it's not a bit. I fucking, I fucking love this guy. I, and the thing is, to know Jesse is to absolutely fall in love with the most sincere Beautiful weirdo in the fucking world. I, I, I went to his house. When you used to have the crib in Echo Park. Yes. And I opened up his fridge thinking there would be... The Bone maybe, Zone. Maybe... <laughs> the Bone <laughs> Well, I didn't know it was that the That was the street name for the dwelling. So yeah. I, went, I, I went into his fridge hoping there would be snacks or maybe a beer. Not in this fridge. All it was... Just All it was bones. was one sad, half-full bottle of uh, Bragg's amino acids and then... Nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was it. Oh yeah, a lot of strip, <laughs> a lot of strippers kept their polish up in my fridge. If you know what I mean. <laughs> oh yeah. You know how it be. Uh, right, I out. think the fa the fascinating thing was like well after I had met you, and I I was in a dark place. I don't know if you hear this a lot, but I was in a dark place when I was hanging out with you. Yes, uh, me, me and Mark McGrath. <laughs> but like I remember. And the you, Smash Mouth singer. Years later, a lot of my, people hang out with him and John Popper, the B Travelers. You know, 
That's a dark scene. Dan, I'm sorry, my brother. It's all right. But I do want to say one thing to the listeners, the straight-up listeners. Jeff just exploded. In person, Dan looks like a G-damn, handsome, um, oh, my God, Paul. And you guys know this. He's in, like, um, the <laughs> bromance movie. Um, Paul Walker. No. Paul Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. <laughs> Dan looks like a handsome Paul Rudd. You can't totally. see it from there. You can't oh, see it yeah. from there. Vintage Kenny Rogers. I'm not talking like plastic surgery. All with right, the weird, well, now we're getting mixed signals. Like day, <laughs> daytime He's like friends. Paul Rudd, just like the gambler, man. Yeah. Same thing, right? <laughs> Paul Rudd just fucked the gambler. Ant-Man 3. Yo. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, there's an uplifting message there, which is like, Absolutely. hey, man, man one man's Paul Rudd is another man's Kenny Rogers. Yo, this Paul Rudd is a milk dud because he's creamy. He leaves room for cream, if you know what I mean. Do you remember my ex-wife, my ex-wife, <laughs> my ex-wife Aaron McGathy, who is... Fr- the like, gaff. Like, uh, we called her the gaffer the tape. Gaff. She, the, the gaffer she, tape is actually an adult film with Dan and her, and I'm going to zip it. She, show, she showed me a clip of your origin story, which is also actually the origin story of another friend of mine, another guy who I admire equally, who's like truly the opposite of the spectrum. Like your origin story, forgive me if this offends you, that it's like, but it's like it starts with an MTV contest, right? I That's thought not, you were going to talk about my Yiddish background. <laughs> It starts with a it starts with a Yemish uh, the yes. uh, a, a Didic uh, no it's a, the, the MTV had this like be the next VJ contest absolutely and they did this like nationwide thing it makes no sense to young ears now it's like why would you want to be famous isn't that a one way ticket to fucking devastation but back then it was like hey man be the new MTV VJ and they had like a populist kind of like thing absolutely they, and they and the and the two runners up it was you. And it was my other friend, Dave Holmes. Oh, know? yes. And Dave Holmes is like this amazing, such a fucking amazing, charismatic, friendly, like, like he he's is the a force. opposite of you in every way, which is not an insult to either of you. Okay. But like, 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 like <laughs> my, my, my ex-wife showed me the clip. She was like, she showed me the two of you. Oh, at that time we were much different. Like, 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 well, yeah. Like but, Ernie and Bert though. But it was like, you, you both, but both of you had class. It was like, you weren't. If Ernie and Bert switched shells or bodies, but like the soul of like, cause I'm more, I look more like Ernie, but I got the soul. No, I look more like Bert, but I got the soul of an Ernie. Yeah. Well, anyways, you won and Dave Holmes was like. <laughs> yeah. But like you, you won because obviously the people are going to be like, fuck the system. Give me this guy. Like, well, like, also, yes. like, like, like knowing Jesse, like he's like a, you're a like encyclopedia of music knowledge. Like, like you really know music. This is true, which brings us to the part of Harmon Town that we are introducing tonight called Music Trivia with yeah! Jeff Sabre. Oh, that's right, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, damn. Mr. Jeff B. Davis, who is, by the way, guys, I don't know if this got mentioned, but can we give it up for Jeff? Do you know that he just performed yeah. at the Royal Albert Hall? That's that's so amazing, and then we got it. We got to tell some Jeff stories too. Like the time you, me, and Jeff got stuck in an elevator with Brian Adams and Tina Turner, <laughs> and uh, oh, it's, and it's a, a bottle good, of absinthe. It's a, it's a, you guys want to hear that story? A, yeah. Let's just say. Let's just say Brett Kavanaugh knew what a devil's triangle was because we wrote the book or the calendar. Either way. Whoa. Right. They wrote the That's calendar it. on it. That's it. I, I ran into Jesse. I was uh, with, 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 uh, in the Jesse autobiography. Remember, I think we, I can. We, we were in, we were in uh, it was New Year's Eve in Las Vegas. Oh, this is a great one. Uh, uh, it was uh, 2005, I believe, four into five. Okay, and and we were at the uh, yeah. we were at the uh, the Hard Rock. The Hard Rock Cafe, there was a show, it was New Year's Eve, and it was... Oh, headliner. And, uh, who is it? Fucking... Uh, V-E-L-V-E-T. The Velvet Revolver. Boom. Who's 
Hybrid uh, of so we we had six. I read Scott Wyland as vocalist. Yeah, Duff slash and Duff of GNR and then oh, the other guy. a weird um, man with a mustache. Uh, g- no wild card guitarist, but not wild card like motherfucking the legend, the goddamn Johnny like Cash. Dan There's only one wild card here. Dan Harmon is the Johnny Cash of comedy, and I just want to acknowledge so I, that I, right I, I, now. I, I, I he is that. like the Anton LaVey of comedy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's Dan. He's the Dark Lord. He's the Light Lord. But listen, he's the Lord of the Ring, and when he punches, that hand sings, and it swings. All right, so you're I hired. Just, you're hired. All right. Yeah, I, you're here every week. Sorry, forever. Dave Holmes. Oh, if you, yo, man, I'll be in the, behind the piano. Just Jesse, call me out. Je- Jesse, D- D- Dan, and Spencer. Jesse texted me. He goes, "I'm here. I'm in the back row." Hell yeah. I was like, yo. "I can't believe that you were quiet." Because I, I I can't believe hey that man, we didn't know that you were here. Hey man, that's what you think. Here. It's quietude, man. You know when I when I yeah, quietude. Yeah. It's a it's a Weezer's thirteenth record. No one knows about. He's been big on this quietude okay, thing. Let me it's, the truth. It's, it's leftover studio outtakes from the um, Ratitude album. Is whoa. I don't know where I was going there for a moment, but I'm back on track. Um, like this is a magical. This is this is more magical for me because I I lo- come on like Dan is is is. The man and right. and just amazing. Can we talk? Well, it was a music trivia. Let's and get into. Can we talk about Phil Collins and yeah. Tori right. Amos? Okay, but right. I uh, believe that. Uh, yeah, uh, of course, uh, uh, Dan. Uh, you, uh, Dan, do you want to? This, this is your house. Dan? It's like yo. If you're like yo, I want to whip towels on you, boys. It's okay. like down. I'm gonna come. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna come troll this. Each of you get to ask each other a Phil Collins <laughs> trivia question. Oh, oh. So okay. you, you, oh. you get to try to stump each other. I mean, can we okay. just to clarify, Jeff? Yeah. Can we go? <laughs> throughout like Peter's <laughs> entire career, which I believe traces back to 1968 or 69. Save it for the game. Save it for the game. Genesis <laughs> album from the beginning. All right, all right. So with Peter e- Gabriel, e- e- Mike e- Rutherford. E- each of you right now think of a Phil Collins trivia question for each other. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, okay. Uh, 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 Spencer, you get to pick. Do you have a coin or a die who, who can go first? Wait, so we're, com- we're competing against each other? Yeah. Well, we this is the first time, by the way, Dan and I have competed against each other since, get this, there's a male review, dance review, you know what I mean, <laughs> called Thunder from Down Under, all Australian men. But they needed uh, That's two the of one time. They had a spot for uh, for one more dancer. It's, it's very true. much like Chris Farley and Patrick Absolutely. Swayze. Uh, uh, no, no, <laughs> no, not like that body body shape wise. This is more like uh, Dolph Lundgren versus Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah we. But it's we competed. True. That was the last time we actually competed it's in the something. The one time that it was either you or me. Dan was Mr. Thunder from Down Under. Yo. Right, so Spencer, pick pick a die that that, that, that is close to a, a coin flip, like maybe. Like yeah, a, yeah. Someone do odd or even. Oh uh, yeah, so odd or odd even. Or even. You're getting odd while I'm getting even. Hell yeah. You're getting even while I'm rolling a dice and getting odd, which uh, means Dan is something. Okay, so Dan. Dan, I Dan, start, Dan do you, do, I start you, with a Phil you, Collins trivia question. Yeah, Dan, you get to, you get to either receive or, or kick right now. Like, oh, right. Whoa. Well, can I, oh, so can, I can ask, rated. Can I ask him received? to ask me a question? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. yes. Yeah. You have to ask oh, me a question. I'll receive. I I go. I ask for you go first. No, I, no, I no. got the coin toss. You, you have to. You have question. to ask me a oh, Phil Collins. I have to ask you a Phil Collins question. Yeah, I'd be. Yeah, I'd yeah, be honored yeah, to. Th- th- this is this is Phil Collins trivia. You on Dan one on one. I could ask things like who is the bass player on Another Day in Paradise, but we all know that's Leland Skiller. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> all right, well, I can't that was. Dance. Pro- I'm I hoping that was needless talk. showboating. Okay. I can feel it coming. Come Everyone on. does it's know that. Right. Dance into the light. Is that Phil Collins? It is. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm like this is my question for Dan. Okay, <laughs> Dan, Phil Collins. This is true, y'all. I mean this. I'm in fucking the paradise, question? by the way, right now. This is yeah. No, this is good. Okay, so get this. Phil Collins was a war histrionado. Uh, he loves um, like historical he wars. A, he was so a war was histrionado. One, there, well, he was. there is one specific kind of war in the history of this country, and it's almost also a landmark monument in this country named after that war where it took place. Um, this man, Phil Collins, collected all kinds of memorabilia about this specific monument and, 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 uh, and battle. And um, Dan, can you name what this battle was? It's a oh. historical battle in America. Gettysburg. Oh no! 
Oh, no. Now, yo. All right, one of the great things about the Dynasty typewriter um, is the popcorn. We all know that. Available in the lobby if you're hungry. Oh, yeah. If y'all need a food break, they made plenty of popcorn. They also got other concessions. It is half off now, so just go crazy. <laughs> Just don't throw it on the stage, because that'll bring back, like, you know, uh, it'll remind us of our Thunder from Town under auditions when they would throw popcorn at us to make us dance. Yeah, but, you um, snapped the, into, like, showmanship? Like, uh, yes. You're badass. Like, you're, you're like, Thank yeah, you. Is it? you heard a music here, and you're like, anyways, here's the thing. I'm Jude Law in AI, and I'm here to serve. Like, like you just Jesse, what, what, what was the battle? The battle of El... Uh, no, 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 the Battle of, in San Antonio, Ozzy pissed on it, the Alamo. The Alamo. Oh. Check this. Oh, okay. But th- listen, I don't want you to the just Alamo. take my word for it. Is there someone with an internet connection that can verify that I'm not making up a random thing? Because y- you guys do know I do that. I prank phone call the Hampton Inn uh-huh. and tell them that I sell waffle makers and can get them an even better one than the one they're... Giving the public for the breakfast and it's like a whole. But this thing. game is not over because Dan, you now have the chance to get even yeah, right now. Yeah, exactly. I no. can fucking yeah. knock your socks yeah, off. That, no doubt. And that let is me cool let me not get too cocky <laughs> at all because that was a left brainer one. Uh, so on this like Alamo, oh. Has worth of what? Church church has verified it. So I church. I don't know. And he donated it recently we have though. Church verification, everybody. Church I think to a great museum. I mean, that's I also from earlier when we were talking about charities, I got a great charity I'm a part of that also helps out much like the Innocent Project, and I love them. They're great. They do great work. Prison reform, very important. Fair justice system for all. No bail bonds for anyone, and just let everyone be award and fucking like, yo, let it just be a free. Let's. Hey, let's do this. Uh, Real quick. Dan, do you, do you have know, your... I'm trying to think so hard of like oh, a follow-up question. I feel like that was like... Because you can even the score, and, and Spencer's going to do the tiebreaker. I know, I could like kneecap him with oh, like... But shit. I'm not... It's, that's Yo. the humiliating thing. Like, I, no, no, I don't, no. I don't have a fucking Phil Collins question that can like... I can feel it in the air tonight. You're going to have a good one. Oh! That's just... Come on, you're better than that. There's a bomb-ass <laughs> Phil Collins <laughs> album track called than- Like China... Came out around the same time as uh, China Girl by DB, David Bowie. I suggest everyone give it a listen after the podcast, Like China by Phil Collins. You, will you, what, like, what, I'm not That's stalling. Fair. Like, no. tell me as yeah. a music aficionado. Anything. Will you tell me, Phil Collins is a f- amazing. Yeah. A brilliant man. He played the drums on Do They Know It's Christmas Time at All Feed the World. I mean, he's a great songwriter. Yeah, and, and a great so like like he's a drummer of a band that started with like a fucking like prog rock. Yeah, and he and Peter he Gabriel emerged and he dragged everyone along with him. Like like to yes. move from why, why why hasn't that biopic happened? I think now that the Queen Bohemian Rhapsody last night at the Golden oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Globes Best Picture, yo Jeff and I have hung with Rennie Macklet and Christian Slater a couple of times. It's true. Over at uh. Amy Grant's house, you know, when she's in town with Clint Black. You hung out with Amy Grant? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. She yeah, made my puberty Yeah, we were on the same happen. record label, Sparrow. Wait, what? Amy Grant caused my puberty. <laughs> and my atheism. Because, oh. because she's like, she's so Christian and with the kinky red hair. And she's just Ooh, like, baby, baby, oh, baby, baby. She can't even say the word B. She's so Christian. She's like, baby, Ooh. baby. And I'm like, oh, your teeth and your lip. She oh. has only been with one man. I, I can assure you that. Soil. <laughs> Unless just, she's like, the like, biggest whore on, out there, but I don't, don't, oh, don't Amy think Grant. so. I was so. I always had a. Fetish. All right, Dan. Dan ask a- first. Okay. A- ask heartbeat. him an Amy Grant okay. question. No, 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 no. no. Oh, I don't no. have any. No. Let me. Uh, also, how about this, Dan? I'm, I'm going to give you a, 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 a comptroller uh, uh, special. You get to ask him any question about any band because that's how fucking encyclopedic. Well, that's more important, right? Because yeah, okay. So like, uh, so and really, one other thing just that needs to be said here too, because I, I, I'm not gonna not give Dan an accolade that's really due. Um, uh, the guy who's headlining the first week uh, of the first Friday shows of Coachella, um, Dan, he basically discovered and brought to prominence basically like a Miles Davis to music right now, which is going to, in the history books of all the amazing things Dan has done and is fucking going to do, this is still, this would be a highlight for fucking anyone. I mean, 
Dan fucking, yo, it's because of Dan that we all have Donald Glover, and I think that oh, that needs to be, yeah. uh, you I know, when we talk about great say- music, <laughs> right? I was like, I what mean, are Dan, you doing? That's, that's awesome, man, and you you gave him a platform to shine, and, and, and shine he did, and you, it's just a beautiful thing you deflect, brought to humanity. Deflect, deflect. No, 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 but thank you, thank you. Of Amazing. Course. That you made that connection, but like also at the same time, no, 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 no. Like, like, like yeah, because like, so, yeah. Well, well, fucking Dan, Dan, you can pick any band, any any era, and see if you can stump Jesse Camp. Okay, and like, I'm still like, waiting like, for I the wanna, Phil Collins. One. I almost want. I just want to like like talk. I want. Yeah. I, I want to like throw shit at you because I like, I feel like my my music tastes are so provincial. Like they're only. I know a lot of inside music biz secrets. Like, like, I used like, to watch Clive Davis's tell, cars. Tell, tell me everything about Tori Amos. I, I, I oh like, yo. I, like, do, I, do you I, know? You because that's one of my famous MTV moments is me with Tori Amos singing uh, "Dream On." Did I don't you know, know that? that. No, I don't know that. Oh, that's Googleable. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. no, that's Googleable. Man. <laughs> Take a look. It's in a book. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> a reading rainbow. I can do anything. It happens. It's in a book. It's Googleable. Yo, that's that's on but there's a lot of stuff about me that's Googleable, so you, but that, that we don't need to get into. So you met Tori Amos. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. And you sang In fact, two years before MTV, this is in like Wallingford, Connecticut, I snuck into a Tori Amos concert at like, you know how you have maximum, minimum security prisons? Well, there used to be this, um, this like place, like 3,000 person place in Wallingford. Conne- anyway, you could like, anyone could sneak into this thing. Was, that's Connecticut. Connecticut is like minimum security concert venues, you know? Like, but that's... So you ended Why up are we on that? I don't know. That was on me. I mean, sorry for so that you're tangent. With, you're with Tori Amos. Like, oh, yeah. About Tori Amos. Two years later, I'm in her hotel room smoking, smoking, slipping on gin and juice, laid back. <laughs> what is she like? What does she uh, smell corn like? Cornflake girl. It smells like cornflakes, but in a good way. <laughs> like, I ain't talking like those soggy ass cornflakes. I'm talking crisp and. This is, I'm being oh, presented shit. with a video of okay. you and Tori Amos on my iPhone. It's Googleable. <laughs> this is a, we're playing a video of you. This is you and Tori Amos. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but in the video, you're wearing a ridiculous hat. So and I thought I'd, so I thought Thank you, I'd bring it around and I thought I'd break out another crazy hat. And this is pretty crazy. This this hat got fifty one fifty. But wait, Jesse. So let me tell like like so <laughs> oh, really? like I reference the, the idea of yeah. like 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 so is it is it accurate to say your mm-hmm. Forrest Gump adventure begins with this like MTV contest, That's which is like pro like 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 but I had a Jenny too, you know. But obviously you had gumption, otherwise you wouldn't have won that contest. I did have gumption. You beat my friend who was like. I had some who, bubble gum who has shrimp. moved on to uh, establish himself as the Dick Clark Oh, of Dave. Yeah, yeah, I tell you all about that because the media always tries to pit us against each other like they like Dolph Lundgren versus <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> But Again. my question is, so obviously... Or coming, like Wesley Snipes versus the IRS. But you know? coming... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but coming to that stage, yeah. you obviously were already a yeah, savant. Yeah, Dave and I shot... That's crazy, you should bring that up, Dan. We shot a Coming to America type <laughs> movie <laughs> yeah. on the Arsenio Hall to Dave's Eddie Murphy... And um, he played, like, a guy from Poland, and then I was, I guess, his helper. It was very, like, Black Sheep, Chris Farley, David Spade. We made a movie together. It's never going to come out because um, <laughs> that was back when Dave was going through his satanic period. <laughs> well, no, First yeah, we off, are. he was Wicca, so he didn't show up in half the dailies. But number two, um, <laughs> he was also into a really heavy Wicker candle period. He was making candles. Jesse, can we, can we talk about your t- your trousers right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm this, sorry for going off the rails on a crazy train. Yeah, but these, these, these tights... These but tights that crazy right train now. leads back to the station, and that station is located in Harmonton! Yeah! Yeah! Popular no, show. I want to know... I want to know, like, the, 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 obviously leading up to... i listened to preachers. I don't... <laughs> Jesse uh, one time called me up, and he goes, he goes, Hey, Jeff... Um, you want to come to the Whiskey A Go-Go tonight? We're, we're going to go see L.A. Guns. 
And we, and he, and he, he yeah. of course, we get backstage and we're hanging out with Phil Lewis, who's the fucking grooviest. The man. But like, but like to go to a rock show. Stole with, Rod Stewart's girlfriend back in the He fucking day. did. He fucking did. Yeah. Uh, but to go backstage at a rock show with Jesse is like to be on a magic carpet ride of rock and roll, like fucking uh, fa- fantasy. Well, because, yes. so here's a question I want to ask you. Anything, Dan. Why aren't you a <laughs> snob? Because you're clearly not a snob. Because you're uh, not, you're not doing a big. Life humbles me a lot. <laughs> When you, because you, you're like a lot of people who uh, have encyclopedic knowledge of things, like yeah. they make their bones by going like, well, I, 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 I talked to you about Phil Collins, and yeah. a lot of people I'd love that like, question. But like, I, I, I want to know, like, like so, you're the skeleton key. You're like this ultimate fan. You like that's your sure. charisma. Absolutely. Oh, is, thank the, you. is there such a thing as a bad thing for you? Like like Oh, are, I've made some bad moves, believe me. No, 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 no not you, not estate. you. Don't worry about you. I'm talking about as a consumer. Oh, I'm saying okay. like it's like if I say Phil Collins to you I did a movie with Charles Groden, bad move. Yeah. <laughs> You're you're like <laughs> Phil Collins. He did this. He did that. I say Tori Amos to you. Yeah. I've, I've only said the two oh, things that are so important woman. to I'll me. Wonderful woman. I tell I tell you honest stories. But from my this question point to out. you is: Could I say something to you that would, would, would make you go, "Oh fuck that! That's bullshit." You know, like Menudo or like. I'll I tell you. Welcome. <laughs> one thing I'm glad you bring that up. One pet peeve of mine, although I think the public uh, definitely cried out against it, but it didn't need to be that mean to it. But um, it was very ill conceived. The Steve. Carell movie, Welcome to Mavine, about how he basically, so he's, let's just go there with this real quick. He is a man that was at like a, like a, like a rough kind of bar and he was just telling all the rough locals that he, um, that he got, that he wanted to be a cross dresser or something. And so I don't know, the alcohol got in them, you know, and they, they like beat him well within an inch of his life, like this group of people in England. So then this dude is brain damaged, but goes to heal in this world where he gets a lot of like G.I. Joe and weird like action figures and, and builds an imaginary life about that with him in it. And this movie's two and a half hours and it's called Welcome to Mavine. And it like had a $60 million budget and I think it brought in maybe <laughs> $1.2 million. <laughs> Wait, you mean Marwin? Marwin. Yeah, Marwin. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that confused with Aquaman. <laughs> Wait, so Wait but you're saying you're saying okay, there's shitty movies. Okay, I don't no, recommend no, them. Do, yeah, dig, dig this, Dan. I mean, uh, yeah, w- w- I, I can't I, believe Blaine Pan. What? That was. Um, I'm Je- sorry. Jesse, remember New, New Year's Eve, 2000, whatever. Mini it was. stroke. I'm out of it. And we're, we're we're sitting like in the fourth row at the joint and at the Hard Rock. In oh, Vegas. this is a great story. I'm and, glad we circled back. And it's. Uh, <laughs> This is a beautiful time. This is around the time that the white stripes were breaking. This is when the strokes were happening. This is when Interpol were fucking jamming out. Interpol. They were just starting to uh, communicate their fingerprint analysis with each other. Oh, yeah. Interpol was like coming up. English, you know, police. I read in in a Jesse and the girl that you were with at the time. Oh, Alexis, who was a crazy bitch. Fuck. All right. Well, that notwithstanding. There it is. Um, oh, there it is. Well, I, we, okay. we had extra tickets, and, and, and you're like, yeah, man, what's going on? I go, we got tickets, like, second row for the... She's uh, prostitution. Uh, for, uh, not right. For... Oh. for, for <laughs> she's, all right, well, she's not here to defend herself. <laughs> No. Phil Collins isn't either, but I you had nothing but praise for him. Love Phil Collins. I, I well, think he gets, then treat your ex girlfriends as well as oh, Phil yeah. Collins. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so we're sitting there. She's got an invisible touch head. She takes you in now and makes right hold yeah. up yeah. your heart. She, she seems to have an invisible touch. We're all back she takes on board. You in oh, and grabs her. Jesse, hold in your heart. Jesse, you, you know the story. I don't know her. Have we, have we ever to me, it's all the same. Name. But when she gets into yeah. your heart, you'll you never be, be the same. same. But oh, now, now I know she's got a built-in ability. To take everything you see, and, and now it I seems know. I'm, I'm falling, I'm falling, falling for her. She, she seems, seems to have an invisible touch. Hey, all right, hey, yeah, all right. Sorry, it was the, it was wait, specifically wait, your indulgence that triggered us to stop. But, uh, yeah. How does Jesse, that make you feel? It's a hard one, one time. Oh yeah. One, one time, Dan, we all got. Oh, back to New Year's Eve, though. Super okay. Quick. All right. Now, now. Thank. Thank you. So now, the band Velvet Revolver are on stage. It's the late great Scott Weiland of STP looking like anorexic thin. He's got like one of them like police um, caps on his head. Yeah, like, like a Nazi like officer hat on. Yeah. Okay, yeah, very Kenneth Cole. 
Okay. Right. I, sure. I, like, you know, kind that's of, optimistic. Like, take me down like, like, uh, like Faster Pussycat kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. take me down-ish. Yeah, just six million Take me down. And so we're sitting there, and we're watching it, and cool. it, it, it's like... It's and a, then it's, it's slashing 11, him and Duff, Matt Storm as well, and then a, a, a weird, um, like, man, like a, he, Mr. Clean, but with a mustache, dude. Dave Kushner. Nice. Well, which nice is call. now a marijuana strain at the what local... What did I tell you? Shut yeah. up. That was... Yeah. Yo. Sorry. So, sorry. And, and, anyway, no. we're, so we're watching it, and it sucks, and Jesse and I just happen to be there, oh, and, and we're sitting... Day. We're, like, oh, we're like, four, no. like four seats away, and I look, I look over at Jesse, and Jesse's looking at me, and I go, what do you think about this? Because like, it's, it's, it's like 10 minutes till midnight <clears throat> on New yeah. Year's Eve, and Jesse looks at me, and he goes... They fucking suck, man. <laughs> I, and I, I, I go. That's what I want. I, 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 I want to hear on, what on, you no, think no, sucks. Hang on. I, I said. I said. Beautiful I, boy, Steve Carell's other movie. Okay, I'm gonna just say no, this. No, no, Jesse. It may be a beautiful story, but like, I don't really find it believable that there is a <laughs> child born in Marin County, California, that's addicted to Crystal Street meth. Don't buy that when Adderall is so readily available. <laughs> I just. That's a big leap of faith in the plot that I really got to, you know. But if we're going to talk about prison reform, how unfair the justice system is and how redlined and rigged it is against people of color, you know, and believe me too, it's not, you know, black lives matter, but it's like when it comes to the poor, no lives matter. And we as a nation got to like come up on that. And when we do, prison reform is part of that, you know, but this is what I'm getting at. And I think I remember what I'm getting at. And I'm trying to install right now. Buffering, buffering. <laughs> Jeff, I can't believe that I'm having a senior moment at the age of 39. Yeah. But it happened. 39! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just being false humble. <laughs> but let me tell you, that, no, I um, am having a senior moment. It's tough to know. I'm going in and out of it. But I do remember we were talking about Amy Grant. And right, hey, how hey. beautiful and wholesome she was, kind of like Tori Amos Wait, before can, all the kids with Dean can, McDermott. Can you, can you put Jesse on the vo on the vocoder? Like, hey. Oh yeah, but did we get to the punchline of the Velvet Revolver concert that everyone is so like yeah. invested in knowing the ending of? <laughs> Jeff, no, I, I, I said they, I kind of think they suck, man. I, I, and, I, and then I, you I, asked and me. I, and I look down and I go like, what? Because like, all this talent is on stage. You got all these great rock stars. I go, what is it that, that they're not doing? And Jesse brilliantly goes, where's the songs? He goes, they got no songs. And, and that was fucking brilliant. Yeah. And, we, and we stood up oh, and left. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yo. We proceeded to party the rest yeah. of the night with Carrot Top, our brother. Partying with Jesse Carrot Top. Has Carrot Top been to Harmontown yet? Why the fuck not? We you get know Chris he's Angel. got fun props. I love the top. Yo, the top. I love the top. I think the top could work a room that's like audio and like can't see the props. You'll never meet the a top nicer of the fucking charts. person in your life than Carrot Top. He's Let's the most answer no. the question, Soul where are the, the songs? Let's hit do it. it. Hit it. for the hard working. Prop comic. Yo. Working. No, no. Hit, hit something. No, hit a different. Uh, less percussive. It's more about singing than rapping. Where are the songs? Is the question. Where are the songs? We're Velvet answer. Revolver had a great song, Sliv uh, Slither. Which, but other than that, there was really a lot of filler on that album. You know, so like There's it was one kind song. of like a painful. Yo. Tell me your velvet. Okay, and then oh, we get no, off velvet no revolver because we're with Dan, and you know what? Honestly, Dan, no, brother, it is an honor being in your presence. I mean that from the bottom All of my right, heart, and no, it's it like, why the sarcastic. fuck am I talking like over? No, like, no, you, no, no. This we is love like this. being on fucking Stern is being at Harmontown. All right, all right, no, okay. we're loving your energy. But the this way is awesome. Dan's nonlinear interviewing, it's like Tom Snyder, like but a little <laughs> drunker, yeah, but a little yeah. smarter too. And with the good looks of Paul Rudd, my God, Dan right. is handsome. Okay, He's all like, right. I can see You're Dan marrying right. Eva Longoria. Okay, of He's course. that level of hot. Obviously, you can come back every week. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, but I disagree with all of those points. Uh, no. I am not wait, that wait, Chris handsome. Hemsworth said, is Dan Harmon our fourth brother? Where's the songs? And our Billy Bob went to boo. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, I was so, like, Amy Grant was like, baby, baby, I want a mama, mama. And MTV was like, hey, she's Christian. She won't, she's like singing about her husband. And I was like, yeah, she is. <laughs> but like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I wanna soil. Like, I, yeah. I, I, had a, I have the Han, so 
the, the, the Han Solo complex, like I, like all of Put the, that lightsaber in a Christian lady. The girls that I had crushes on in high school, they're like, like they weren't, they, it was, it was like, there were the Amy Grants, like they, the, oh, it, yeah. was, it was like, what it about was Crystal like, Gale? Bec- Crystal Gale. No, no, no that the, was, well, that was. Coal Miner's uh, daughter. Yeah. Yeah, the Red Lynn sister with the hair to, her f- to the floor. Pass the ass. But hell yeah. Pass the ass is also Dan's latest musical EP available on iTunes. Pass Dan the does ass. songs with Paul oh. Simon, Bruce Hornsby in the range. And this is the lead single co-written with Michael McDonald. Where are the songs? I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about oh talking about singing with the lyrics. My name is MC Singer. MC Singer. I like to hang out with my finger, pointing at the lyric style, singing all the long day while I like to sing to the top, to the bottom. Fucked your mama so hard I belong in Sodom uh, and Gomorrah. I think I'll come back tomorrow and fuck your mama again. Biblically, a fucker freak. Yo, my name is Yahweh. MC Yahweh in the house. I'll make your wife turn into a spouse. Uh, If she looks back, she's salt. You can never call that assault because the woman is subjectified uh, through the Bible wide from chapter 1 to chapter 400,000. I'm the man that comes down hounding on the patriarchy. I got the glass ceiling and I got the fucking dick key. Unlock misogyny with my big spiritual dick. Oh my God. Oh shit. Hey, yo, how, how, how you doing over there? Well, my name is Job, and I'm, I don't have a care. I'd like to put that to the test. Oh, well, that would be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm Job. I'm the best. Well, your wife has AIDS. Oh, that's, wow, that's, so does your maid. Oh, no, and so do your kids. Oh, shit, I, oh, fuck, and your house fell apart. Oh, God, I'm Job, and I hate, I hate, I hate, I, I don't hate, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love being abused by God. That's what I'm talking about. I love bringing down the house on top of people that pray to me. Oh, get down on your knees. Yeah. Oh, my name is Yahweh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hell yes. Job. That was brilliant. That is one no, for the you, you archives the right there. This right. is the... This is the man who discovered Childish Gambino, no, it, Dan oof. fucking it Harmon. Oh, uh, it can't. It you can't. basically gave him Wait, talent. Uh, do you, do, uh, Jesse, Jesse, and Jesse and Dan, do you think you, you could freestyle together a little bit? Can't we do something together? Yeah, yeah uh, fuck uh, yeah, like California Zach, Love. Zach, you got a beat? Think about yeah. us doing something together. Like California Love. I'd be honored yeah. to be on the track. Yeah. I want to do like something. Like, like, you, like, you, like, you, you, you can do the rapping, Dan, and you might just put in like the Rihanna hook. hook. Yeah, you put the hook on it. Are this you? is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's been taken. There it is. Like that? All right, Zach, yeah, you hook? got something for us? That's yeah. it. Oh, All right. Shit. It's like John Travolta without the weave, y'all. This is straight dirty. It's seductive and actually in the dark looks a lot like Bruce Willis. Get ready for it. Here we go. When I look at you, I see the sky in my nose and my eyes. I see you and I look within. I see your family, my kin. I see love. Yeah. The man sees the love all the time. He's got a big, big heart and he wants you to know that empathy and love are the best weapons that we have in this world tonight. I s- yeah. He's got a beautiful heart, he's got a beautiful soul, but when it comes to gambling, he's got no control. I, I'm he's an kind of a bitch. It's true. Yeah. yeah. But when he watches R. Kelly or he 
watches the show that I'm talking about, Nancy Grace, yeah, that bitch, that hoe. Yeah. yeah. He gets pissed at her. That bitch is full of shit, yeah. and I'm saying it. He's saying it. Nancy Double Grace, down. yo. Double down. I'm Double down. down. Double We're down not here to make a political bed. statement Okay, my mic went slammed I gotta let you know my favorite Colin is hands Oh my down. lord, that's not true I like Colin Farrell And Double I also down. like Colin Hay from Men at Work I like a lot of Colin Like Colin Quinn Great comedian, we gotta get Colin Quinn I'm, Yo. I'm a Damn. I'm Amy a Quinn, robot. where you at, Amy? husband is a dude named Clint yep. Black and right now we just want to we just want to talk to you Clint yep. we just want to give you a message listen we just want to have Amy yep. and you over me and Dan have a timeshare in Boca Raton yep. we want to fly you and Amy in it'll just be you and Amy yep. and me and Dan three guys one woman we'll give you 25,000 yep. we all share Amy if I'm getting in trouble for having this out loud, I feel I might yep. regret that offer. Okay. Yep. Yo, one thing that should be noted. Okay, oh my God. Yep. Before this gets Michael Richardson, let me just preface this. <laughs> I'm a the Harvey Town Green Room is filled with peyote. The original Indian from the village people, Greg, is back there and he's smoking everyone out with peyote. So that was just me going way to the yep. dark side. I think that's a teachable moment. And in fact, right now we were trying to make the song much like the end by the doors. You know, like, yeah, hello, father. Yes, yeah, son, I'm going to kill you. But that was a song father and son could like listen to each other with like father and son by uh, Kassim. So that's really what we were going for. This, this was a play. This was a one act. Dan and I wrote this all over the New Year's Eve weekend. So um, again, you know, just a hero villain story. I played the villain. So my Mia culpa, Amy, I think it goes without saying that we would purely want a platonic relationship with you. Dan and I are both about monogamy. We are both about wearing special layers of underwear if that helps with the intimacy. You know, we are gentlemen. We yep. do not mean to say that we wanted to plow your field. That was a misquote. That was a, a Sony email that we sent to Seth Rogen about his afro at the time. All yep. right. I don't know what more to say, Amy. I'm really like, yo. My Thank you for coming to Holland's house tonight, everybody. Jesse we'll Camp! All right. For Jesse Camp. Please don't tell me I'm getting kicked off now after the Amy Grant statement. Jesse Camp. We love Amy Grant. Also, Kevin Day, Spencer Crinton, and I'm Jeff Davis, the Comptroller. Your mayor is Dan Harmon. The one and only Jesse Camp. It's Drive fast honor. and take chances. We love you all. That was special. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.